What's up, you fucks? Today's episode is sponsored by Rosario's Pizzeria, located at 1256 South 15th Street in South Philadelphia and was awarded the best pizza place by the Fuck With Philly crew. With over 14 different Mexican-style pizzas, there is no other place in the city with this kind of flavor, including the crowd favorite, Al Pastor Pizza that has guajala pepper sauce, marinated pork, pineapple chunks, fresh onion cilantro, and lime that you will not have anything close to the kind of flavor in this city. And Rosario's is offering our listeners a special offer on weekday only when you call in and use promo code pwp you'll get 10 percent off your next purchase ding again that's pwp to get 10 percent off your next purchase at rosario's pizzeria this episode is brought to you by bad english studios all right bad english studios is philadelphia newest entertainment company bringing you the highest quality studio equipment and engineering for recording music in addition to our two completely soundproof recording rooms we also provide space for shoots photo and video, also offering exclusive talent and business management to any clients interested. Their business and investment management team is brought to you in-house, right on site, from Lions Fair and Capital Ventures. Log on to Bad English Studios and book your time now. Don't forget to log on to shopbadenglish.com. Check out all the merch, grab the gear, tell them we sent you, and check out the fucking episode. Get out of here. Keep the weights here in case I want to get a couple of reps. In case you want, you know I mean, keep feel like if pumping I need a little to get bit. Get a couple of reps in. Get a quick little joining. I I feel you. Just in case you got. That's how you keep those fucking yeah, guns, guns, baby. Guns. Top dog, get your top dog. Are we cool here? Are you? Yes, yeah, sir. Set. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. What's up, everybody? This is Fuck With Philly, live from the Fuck With Philly studio. It's your host, MC Ali Rondo, Aaron on the Foot Talk, and our special guest today, Dill, everybody. Let's give it up. Hey. What's up? It's your boy, Dill. What's happening? What's up, bro? Appreciate What's you coming on, man. Yeah, I know you love getting your ass hit, so that's why we're sponsored whoa, whoa, by Manscaped. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Manscaped. I'm not going to let you put that ass in there. Put... Manscaped. Manscaped. Oh gets God. rid of all the dinkleberries in your ass. It gets rid of everything that's on your shit. If you want a clean, fresh cut on your Johnson or your asshole, some, you know, Ronda might be done, hit up Manscaped. Ronda, what's the promo code for Manscaped? Shave your ass with. <laughs> Everybody's got to shave their balls. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. And you got to shave your gooch. You got to see all yeah. that stuff. What's the promo code, though, Rondo? Use promo code FUCK. Get fuck. a whole Ding. 20% off. Man. 20% off. Yes, sir. You can shave your ass. You can say, I don't shave my ass. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, don't, I never, I never even see my ass. So they have the new Lawnmower 3.0, which is uh, which has an LED light. have a bush. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying, man. has an yeah, LED yeah. light. Lasts 90 minutes. has a 90-minute charge with a USB port. has an LED light. So please check out our guys. Manscaped. Get 20% off your next purchase. 24%. Rhonda, you're also a fuck up sometimes, right? Depends. We on all that. fuck up. Sometimes we fuck up. Sometimes we get hurt, right? Sometimes we get damaged, and that's why we hit up Top Dog. Top. Top Dog. Top. Our homie that we just had on our last episode as well. Top Dog gets you top dollar. You hear top. me? The top injury lawyer in Philadelphia. He's a straight up Philly guy. He's a local. He's a down to earth guy. We love him. He's a big sponsor of us we fuck with him we had him on the episode he has a great story and the way to hit him up is you hit up top dog law on instagram ding ding and he answers the dms not some fucking boring ass or you know miserable receptionist that's probably you know a home wrecker beating up somebody else's family it's him he answers every single time he knows your so case mean, like, he's here for you what if i fell in here like what if i fell in here well, we should talk about that because I could sue you for that for falling in my house. That's, that's but right. I don't fucking know because I'm not an injury lawyer. But Top Dog is. So hit up Top Dog. Top, I'm going to hit you up next week because I feel like something will happen next week. But we're going to find out. And yeah. last but not least, we are sponsored by a new set of guys that we appreciate heavy. And they sent us some gifts. If you want to open these up, fellas, I don't even know what's in yeah, here. Me neither. What we got here. So we got Save home. Our Livers, the so number much one brand is- to cure your hangover. Yeah, guys, yeah. are you in college? Do you like to get fucked up every single night? Do you have a drinking problem, maybe like me? Then what you can do is you can order Save Our Livers. They send you a package. It is cheap. It sits right to your door. It's a revolutionary party experience with not all the effects of hangover kits. High quality drinking products. You can buy uh, beer bongs. You could buy shotgun tools. You can buy drinking games. Save our livers is supposed to save us. We party hard and recover hard. Yeah, my liver might be on saving, but but uh, <laughs> but I use all the help I could get. Yes, sir. Yo, wait. So what we got here? We got the whole joint. We got the okay. I don't know none of this shit. See, do it work with you got <laughs> the super hydration you got formula. Pedialyte. You got all this other shit, 
and we appreciate you guys. So, and use promo code FUCK or PWP10 to get yep. 10% off your next purchase. For, for those Jordan me. Belford nights. Yes, you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely now, today, <laughs> we're with our homie. You might have seen him at every single college party that you can remember. It is our buddy Dill who created the song Jordan Belford Whoa. on his song. Whoa, now. Flipping knees. So, <laughs> my first question is when the song came out, right? You were how old? I was 19. You were 19. Yeah, so were you right. in college at this time? Yeah, so actually I made the song right around my 19th birthday. So oh, yeah? I was a freshman in college at the time. We were 18, and so the movie came out that year. It was 2013, December yeah. 25th. So it was like Christmas 2013, and then my, my birthday, January 5th. So, oh, shit, uh, mine the 14th. So, okay. yeah, like like 10, day, 10 days later, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Hell yeah. um, it was like right around my birthday. We had just seen the movie. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we were just chilling, like vibing, you know, me and my buddy Wes Walker, we would always freestyle, um, you know, just have a good time, like oh, yeah. rapping, like always been a fan of rap, like Meek Mill, uh, Rick Ross, like when I was in high school, all oh, that, yeah. That's exactly you know, you know like to vibes. Yes, so, sir. so uh, yeah, you know, Jordan Belford just came together after we saw the movie and we were just inspired by it, you know? That's awesome, man. Was y'all intention to make a, a, a song on Jordan Belford or was y'all just in the studio and just was like, eh? Y'all were I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. is that your intention or did that just a hundred percent? Because what happened was I saw the movie like right when it came out, like, uh, you know, it came out December 25th. I saw like the end, the, like end round new year. And I, and I was just like, damn, like this is a legendary Banger. movie. I was like, <laughs> yeah. no joke. Like, <laughs> like this is going to be a big movie. Yeah. And so like, then I was in the studio one day and I was kind of vibing, like trying to make a song. Like, you know, I was, what I was really thinking of is like that Rick Ross, like think I'm big meat, huh? Larry Ooh. Hoover, like, you know, and I was just thinking, Hallelujah. like, I'm going to shout out, like, the biggest, like, wealthy name ah, I can okay. think of. So then I was just like, yo, I've been getting dirty <laughs> money, do the bell first. <laughs> yo, yo, it just came together. It's like, I've been getting dirty money. So you were in college when this came out. So, like, did you, so I'm guessing when this comes out, you're at a party, you end up fucking a lot of women, right? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely had sexual relations with I was about to some say, women. I had sexual relations with all those women. Yes, sir. So all of them. That's what, what's the name? We don't count. Saying? I was about to say, how many STDs do you think you copped? Oh, I mean, a limited, very <laughs> limited number. A very limited. Yeah, well, there's medicine now, number. guys. That's a great thing about the 21st century. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, just a quick one, too. Fuck it, dude. Yeah. Did you do the Jordan Belfort? Because the one iconic thing of the movie is snorting cocaine out of a girl's ass. No comment. Nah, just, we did I that shit. Fifth. Hell yeah. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth, bro. You can't just be saying don't do the Jordan Belfort and not be snorting coke out of bitch. Nah, nah. Ass, but, you know, we have a good time. What can I say? You know, here's the thing. Like, every weekend we would go to a college and mm -hmm. it was their biggest party weekend, right? Because they had booked us to come perform Jordan Belfort. So that is their big party right. do drugs weekend. Thanks. And I'm there every weekend. Damn. Like, next week, it's like they just had their party weekend. Now I'm there for their party weekend because it's a different school each time. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, like, you know... In 2015, 2016, we did over 50 shows at different colleges all over America. Damn, we even went out to Europe. So, like, I've been to, like, most major party schools around the country. So, Man, what are those, what are those party scenes like? You, you want to dive into there real quick? So, like, you Yo, you, you in the green room or, like, the I guess the backstage, Sean. Yeah. After the show, you're at a party. I mean, it's just kind of like... You were like a rock star for a little bit, right? That's how it kind of felt. Oh, uh, hell yeah. I mean, it, it's dope, you know, like at the green, like we would always have a green room or whatever. A lot of times we would play like fraternities and stuff. Yeah. So we'd be playing like a frat house backyard, but those shows would still be popping. Like they would oh, get- Oh, it's probably like 400 know, fucking people there. Uh, yeah, 500. like 500, 1,000. I mean, yeah. we, we did a show one time. Um, It, it was at, uh, I believe it was at Duke. And so they have like a courtyard there with three giant frat mansions on each side and then Damn. a stage on the fourth side. And that was probably like 2,000 uh, frat party. Like like each frat has their own like table with alcohol. So it's like a big ass It's like party. a festival. It's like a frat combined. festival. Yeah, that's right. Wait, so frat you remember... <laughs> You frat remember your... We should do that. Fred Fest. Fred Fest. Fred Fest. Fred Fest. Fred Fest. Yo, yo, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Will, let's get it. I'll yeah, we gotta there, get yo. this motherfucker in there. Yo, let's You'll set perform it up. at our Fred Fest. Let's set it up, I'm, man. Swear to God. Wait, so do you remember your first show? Like, I know yeah, yeah, Jordan yeah. Belfort Pie, y'all. So wait, wait, did you... Wait. Yeah, sorry, what, 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 no, I was gonna say, like... I was gonna say, like... So, I mean, you probably never had a show, and then you drop a song, and it's it, it goes big, right? Was it Did it take time? Like, so was it, it something that just kind of hit pretty quick? It definitely takes time. I think that, like, from the outside, it's really easy to just, like, look at something and think, like, wow, it looks like an overnight success. Yeah. But, like, when you're on the inside, it does take time. So, you know, I definitely did a couple shows. I remember we did a show at the Troke in Philly, the Trocadero, the Trocadero, Trocadero yeah. whatever. 
um uh so that that was pretty Rest dope like like it was show. you know it was like a small show but yeah. this was like when jordan it was funny because this is like when jordan belfort was first starting to get popping so like some people knew about it mm. but we had like 20 people there yeah so like i still had that experience of like the small shows but definitely quickly moved to bigger shows and like the first one that comes to mind that's is the I, show the first, that we did yeah, yeah. yeah. the first joint that you was the like, first what lit the yeah fuck? yeah so that these was people, at uh these people like this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was like, at yeah. clemson that was clemson university for one of their game days uh in it must have been 2015 there's a different game day yeah it was, it was like the yeah. the halftime performance so it was like well the thing is we showed up for uh we showed up for a show on friday night i believe and so the show is on Friday night. The game day is the next day, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And so then they ended up, uh, we rocked the show, like over a thousand people there. And that was the first show where they had booked us right at the beginning of the semester. And so the that previous summer is when we had made the video. So like, this is like when the song was first popping off, the first fraternity that booked us. Yeah. And yeah, it was like a thousand people there. They ended up booking us to stay the entire weekend after that first Friday night, because it was just so dope. So they yeah. ended up having us stay there until Sunday. Um, and so like from there, you know, it kind of just took off and we were just doing like one to two colleges every weekend, at least some weekends we would do three, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Damn, dude. And so, uh, working hard. Shit, shit was wild. I mean, we like, you know, it was crazy, you know, just like different city every night, getting on flights. Like we were, we were being like flown to every place. <laughs> Does you know? that seem wild? Yeah. Like, did you feel like, cause I feel like a lot of people, like if I was in that position, like at a, like not at an or, but it, it took like, so from. You were 19 when you made the song. Yeah. Like, how old were you when that when you started hitting all the colleges and doing all this shit? Yeah, how old did it take for the song? Did, were was you, like, it like, 20 years old? You so, dropped it and it was pew, or did it, like, So, oh. I was actually, I had just turned 19 when I made the song. Yeah. So, then, um, it took about a year and a half before it blew up. So oh, I, was, like, I was I was I was twenty. I was, so, you so weren't even twenty one. It came out. Think about this. I released <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, days. that's right. I was beat at college for his fragile stuff, yeah. drinking and doing all this. It was shit. a. Pr- it was right. funny because actually wow. for the music video, we called up Ciroc and we were we were we had them send down bottles. They actually did send some bottles for the music video because, uh, um, but. They Shout weren't. They weren't able to like send it to like us, so we had to send it to like our director because we weren't <laughs> twenty one, and they they found out, and they were kind of your directors were fucked up. Yeah, yeah. they're like, thanks for the Ciroc, kids. Like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> nah, it was fucked up. Like, yeah, just dance, bro. I Hang mean, out. at most places, at most places we went, they would just not give a fuck. Like they yeah, would just man. let us in, and they would give us bands or whatever. But at I some, say, look, I'm bringing y'all motherfuckers. Yeah, I was like, yo, I'm bringing y'all money. Yeah, y'all better be let me fucking drink some. But then, but then some places we would go. Like, let's say if it's a, a event set up officially by a school like yeah. an organization then you go there oh, and they'll yeah. be like you can't drink like like and they'll oh, be right, real, yeah, real yeah. serious about it and shit but that's fine i mean you know like the, the just i was drinking way just, too much just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just pregame, pregame, yeah. pre-game yeah. Yeah. yeah just take a shot or two before you get on you're like that's all i need yeah. just pay me my money that's all you I ever just... feel did you ever feel like like you you went out there and it's almost like because it's kind of like when we talk to a lot of these art, like artists and shit, when they started like hitting it big, they 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 kept saying they feel like imposter syndrome. They're like, "What?" It's almost like you tri- like not tricked everybody, but do you know what I'm saying? Like it seems like like a lot of the people that we've been talking to is almost like they make something that's hot. Obviously, it's a hot ass song. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's something that like it just came about, and then out of nowhere, you're doing this. Were you ever just like, "Fuck, man!" Like, what the fuck is going on? Like this. Yeah, is nah, I, I feel you. I mean, I think for me, I just I always felt like it was something I really enjoyed, and like. I mean, I guess I was ready for it in some sense. I mean, in, in a greater sense, I wasn't ready at all. Like, I didn't have the music all lined up to just drop and drop and drop. Like, yeah, I, but- I hadn't really done a lot of performing. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, when I was younger in, like, middle school and stuff, I used to be into, like, performing and doing shows, like, singing. Like, I was in, like, Grease, the musical and shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid. Fuck and yeah. so, like, I was already around that. And I was, like, already, like, you know being on stage or whatever and like even when i was a little kid i used to be like out in front of the tv like watching green day music videos being like yeah like you know like like, i was ready for that shit man so but but so when it happened it was almost like familiar here's the thing is that like i'm a very realistic type of person Mm -hmm. so like i wasn't that kid that was like saying like i'm being an nba player or whatever but uh, you the, know, the, 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 I was like, I, I, I was know. like, all right, I'm gonna do business or some shit or whatever. Like that's what I so, like, went to school. I thought I was gonna where do did business. You go to school? I went to Tulane University in New Orleans. Oh, nice. Oh, we yeah. Yo, we were just in yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know saw if you saw that on your page. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. the fuck ever, yeah. Wait, so but after the song blew up, did any labels reach out to y'all? Yeah, so we ended up selling the song to Atlantic. 
Oh, yeah. Switch. Was that a good in in retrospect? No. I mean, now, yeah, probably off. Bad idea, decision. Right? The worst well, idea. Don't right? do that. Yeah. Don't fuck with labels. Nah. Do why? Not. You, why? You so do you not own it? Do you not like kind of own so the track? We we still own it. We still own it. Have ownership rights to it. You know, we still get a. But royalty. they probably took a lot. We of get a money royalty, but they took a lot on it. And look, at the end of the day, like uh, it was a it was a foot in the door. It was a learning experience. All those things. But we would have been better off if we didn't take the Stayed deal. Independent. But what, here's the thing. What was it? Doing it was. Me asking? Dang. Yeah, so I mean, it, 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 we, we, we got a royalty a deal. We got a cash yeah. advance. Like, it wasn't that great. Mm-hmm. Like, it should have been... Yeah, they should have paid us a million bucks. Like, yeah. yo, that song has already made them way over a million. Like, millions. That song has made them millions. So, yeah, yeah. And, and we... Knows. Yeah, we only see a little piece of that. So, anyway, that being said, though, like, it was a, it was a learning experience. And so now I've, I've kind of had that. And I've, I've kind of strategized to build out my independent shit. Yeah. So, you know, now I'm totally focused on my independent shit. And I guess, you know, on, on one hand, at least I learned that early and I only did a single song deal with them. Yeah. Because what happens with a lot of artists is you they get sign a, you out. Get a song like, out. Yeah. yeah. Or a multi-track deal. Yeah. And that, we were just talking about that. That's why yeah. I feel like since they know they're not going to own it, that's why a lot of the artists put out a whole bunch of bullshit for their albums. Yeah. And then, yeah, they, then they the mixtapes be fire because well, that's their shit. Because you know if you, if you okay. listen to I'm a lot of albums, no, I actually haven't thought of that. Yeah, but you're right. I'm not about to give them right. all yeah. my good shit, so I yeah. can't. Why would you? That shit. You know what I'm saying? It it's like no if you're signed to a multi-contract deal and you know that all it really takes is a few hits or even one hit on an album, and that's a dope song. That'll make you enough money. Well, it's so, a different game now because, like, you know, back in the day, it was like you have to submit your album to the label or it's going to get no exposure. Right. But yeah. now, now it's like, you got, if, you're, if, if you're NLE Chopper, you post, like, one story post, and that's going to get more views than exactly. anything the label can do. You don't really so, need – I mean, back back then, probably these – probably back then was probably – I don't know. It's probably a lot better now, but that was – what was that, like, 2015, you said? So, I mean – Well, okay, yeah, this is what I was going to touch on. Yeah, this is what I was going to touch on. We were one of the first artists, like early artists, to legitimately blow up on SoundCloud. Like, oh, uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but like Lil Uzi Vert was also one of the early artists to like take over SoundCloud. Yeah, but Jordan course. Belfort was actually like a year or two before Lil Uzi Vert was completely taken over SoundCloud. Mm. So it was like one of the OG songs to blow up on SoundCloud. And I will say this it was like, there was no like history to look back and be like, oh, like anyone can blow up off SoundCloud. Like now that's common knowledge. Everybody yeah. knows you can blow up off SoundCloud. Back then it was like, oh shit, is this gonna stop tomorrow? Or is it gonna right, keep right, going? Right. Yeah. yeah. Damn. That's crazy, man. I mean, did you uh I mean going I mean, did you have other tracks on SoundCloud? Because there was that like that small frame of people blowing the fuck up on SoundCloud. Until everybody got a SoundCloud. Yeah, it's so, just kind of hard to hear everybody's shit on SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so um, when Jordan Belfort came out, we released it on Wes's SoundCloud. I didn't have a SoundCloud. So we actually originally released a song, uh, Jordan Belfort Feet Dill, because like, I didn't even have a SoundCloud. And we just used Dill because my name was Dylan. And yeah. so then it started blowing up. And like, you know, when it came down to it, uh, you know, thank, okay. thanks for Wes. Like, he's the man. You know, like, we made, we're 50 50 on the song. I came up with the lyrics. Yeah. I was the only one who had seen the movie. Wes made the beat. So we just, we, we uh, then, like, like revised it. So it's like Wes Walker and Wes Walker and Dill. Right, right, you right. know? And so, yeah, I mean, it's both of us on the hook. He's the first verse. I'm the second verse. So we're 50 50 on <laughs> Have it. Have you known Wes for a long time? Was that your homie since you were, like, kids? Yeah, since, like, seventh grade, like, middle school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's one where, of my where boys. Where did you guys, like, grow up at? Yeah, we grew up in, like, the Lower Marion area. So Lower he, Marion? Yeah, he went to Lower Marion High School. I went to Heritage. I feel like I, I knew that. Oh, okay. I feel, like, I, I feel yeah. like I remember that kid. Or I remember, like, I remember this blowing up. I remember that. Because yeah. people were saying it was just like some Especially kids like our age. Actually. I'm pretty sure you're like our age. What are you, 25, 26? I'm 25. Yeah, we're 25 yeah, too. Same. Yeah, so. yeah, oh, that's what's up. Hell yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you guys know. I mean, yeah. No, was, we don't. Was, we don't know. Was, no, was, I well, you guys know. You we know have about no idea. Song. We have no idea what that's like. So. Well, you know about the song, you know? like yeah, that's what's yeah. popping when you're. We don't know what that's like. Because, yo, you get someone like, I mean, most people know it, but like you get someone who's like 30 and up. Yeah. Like, they might not even know it. There's yeah, a good chance. So, But everyone under 30 knows it, I would say. Yeah, of course, You'd be surprised man. how much of a gap, like, it is between a couple years. Like, remember yeah. the one time, I, were, actually, I don't know who I was with, but we played some song. We played, like... Oh, some, we was some, at a party at, uh, oh, yeah, I was, when I, I went to you. Temple. So I went to Temple a little late, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it took me a little right? while. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with Annie. We played, like, Schoolboy, what was it, Schoolboy No, no we played, uh, uh, Hands on the Wheel. And nobody and we were that. fucked you know up, song, and right? everyone was like, "We're all like, it was cool, but we're hands yeah, yeah. on the wheel." Oh, yeah, yeah. Nola, 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 Nola. That shit. We, me and Rob were jamming. Everyone's just like, and we're like, "For real?" You'd be surprised. It was like, get, and they're like, they're like yeah. three years younger than me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't but it's just crazy shit. how that shit works. Yeah, that's how it goes. But I mean, Jordan Belfort's been big. Like, it continues to be popular on TikTok. Like, Hell yeah, uh, kids, you know, like even like high schoolers and stuff now know that song. But it's funny because like I'll get a message all the time. Like, 
Like, someone will tell me, like, oh, Jordan Belfort. Like, I used to play that song in middle school. And I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like, like how really? old am I? Like, you were, like, 10 years old bumping this. Like, what the hell? Oh, I am. Like, yeah, you probably should be doing that. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So, you know. And you, uh, and you met a good Jordan, influence And you met Jordan Belfort, right? Yeah, I did. So that was so, probably a coolest experience. Yeah, that was a dope experience. So, actually, you know, years went by where I didn't meet the guy. Like, obviously, I knew he knew the song. I actually really knew he knew the song because when I was at Penn State one time, his like niece came out to me yeah. and was like talking to me about like how her uncle's Jordan Belfort, whatever. Yeah. And so I it's knew like, he knew the song and you know, I knew it was like <laughs> pretty positive, like whatever. So then um, this year, earlier this year, 2020, um, I was just like old school networking. Um, I was out in LA. My parents actually live out in LA now. They, we lived in Philly our whole lives and then they moved out there recently. So yeah. my parents live out there now and um, Basically, my we just got in touch with someone that worked for Jordan Belfort, just like old school networking. So I went over to this dude's house like first time I met him, and I was just like, "Yo, man, like you know, I made Jordan Belfort. Like you gotta get me, you gotta get me in front I need of the to man. talk to yeah. Jordan Belfort. Yeah, you gotta get me in front y'all of the man. I got him in a video. That'd have been yeah. legendary. Oh, that probably. would have been wild. Just snorting man. coke out of we did a coke out of business. <laughs> yeah. That would have been legendary. That would have yeah. been bro. That shit still would have been fucking sick. We we did it justice though, uh, even though even though we didn't get the cameo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But um, but yeah. So anyway, I met up with him and. Uh, I went to his apartment. I sent him an email first and I was just like, told him, uh, I was like, yo, we got to meet up. And uh, so I went to his apartment and we talked and then he was like, yeah, come back and do my podcast. So me and Wes went back out there. His podcast was lit. His podcast is dope. Fire. He's got a nice little setup. I mean, he's a dude that could just talk for hours too. Yeah, I mean, the amount of stories that that motherfucker got, you know what I'm saying? It's just fucking crazy. For days. You have any of like the craziest uh, college situations maybe? Is there like a time where it was just like, what the fuck? We I all have something it, like that. You know? All right. So... Remember that show I was telling you about at Duke? You got yeah, with the, three frats on each side. And you got yeah. a big ass stage. Everybody's partying. So I'm like turned up, singing my song. And what happens sometimes? You got like all that energy. You're just going hard in your verse. And so like if you're too drunk, have you ever like been too drunk and you start like running or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so you just run I'm, off stage. I'm, off stage. I just run off stage and just. <laughs> yak my brains out oh. and just jump back on and keep going oh, i swear the only people that saw are like five people on this side of the stage everybody else was like boom because yes, i was like yes. oh, yo it was, just like, it was eh. wild yeah. yeah just like right back up and everyone's like yeah that's bad it is dude i, I get like this i get i get i get hype in my shows yeah, no, you gotta, no you sacrifices gotta man. you got you got you gotta do what you gotta do i'm about to let it out feed off your energy you gotta bring that much energy that's crazy as shit. Run off the stage. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all kinds Fuck of crazy it. stuff. I mean, one time we were at a club in uh, Arizona, and uh, Wes was just having a night. And he was, like, literally, like, on the stage, like, on the ground, like, like rolling around, like, <laughs> singing and shit. And at some point, the, at, at some point, the dude comes on stage. He's like, yo, you, you got to get off the stage oh right now. God. And so we just turned that place up, though, because they, like, still sold out the whole place. They weren't even mad. They are just like, yo, you guys, like, got to gotta go off now. But, like, you crushed it. So That's all it's about. If you can make the crowd happy, that's all it's about. That's what they're there for. They're trying to get their money's worth. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't start a riot. I mean, so we were young, you though. Riot, so. We were young, though. Like, you know, there's two sides everything like yeah at the same time like there's a lot of things i could have done better like at that time we were young and so i was still learning the ins and outs of the yeah, business like like learning uh, like having a manager and stuff and i had a team that really wasn't like doing that much for me did y'all so, have a manager around the time y'all signed the deal yeah we had like a big before? like fan so not before not before, not, not before. Yeah. but around that's the time where it, that's usually where it gets sour it's like so, when, you, when you get shit after shit pops off then everyone's trying to take a piece of it exactly. they don't for, work for, they don't work for the pie they just want a piece of it no atlantic yeah. probably knew what they was doing they probably knew they yeah. probably knew that like oh shit these guys probably don't even know like the whole bit because y'all didn't know y'all was new to this jones so it was 19 yeah. well yeah, here's 19. the thing like what we did wrong was like we went full industry route so we like got this like very well connected like industry management we got the atlantic records which is like very industry type right. of vibe right instead of going the independent route and what the result was was like the people just weren't taking as good care of us so like what you really need is a uh, a manager who's going to actually care about you like how to advance your career and so the things that we didn't have like we didn't have someone getting a photographer to every every photo shoot now here's the thing i'm the artist like i should know this and i understand that now being older yeah. and more mature like it's my job to get a videographer at an event it's my job to get a pho photographer there if i want those resources right? Yeah. right so you know if we had somebody to guide us more on those things i think we would have been able to like really 
really elevate and extend a lot further. Cause like, yo, we did 50 shows and I probably have, I mean, I posted a recap. It's only like 10 minutes of footage, but we did 50 shows. Like we could have had, we could have had 50 10 minute videos that were all dope promos. It just so. kept coming out. Yeah. So the, like the, a day the in the life shit, type yeah. of thing. Like we should, we could have, remember Wiz had yeah, that joint too? That's what everything. I'm saying. And what I told that Wiz had. Day in the life. That's day what it's called. Life, yeah. it's, it's, that shit, I used to People watch like that shit it. religiously. I like, fuck with shit like that. Like, yeah. yo, we needed someone on our ass to be like, yo, just cut a song and shoot yeah. a music video for it at your next show. And then yeah. do that 20 times. Like, mm -hmm. because we were just overthinking it, like trying to learn how to make songs, et cetera, et cetera. And like knowing what I know now, it's just like, damn, we should have just cut a few songs, shot some music videos, kept building. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so like it was a learning experience and that's why I've come back to it now with my independent shit. Yeah. Like I really restarted everything in 2019. Yeah. So I went back to Tulane in New Orleans and finished yeah. school after my tour. So like I took a year off, went back, finished my finance degree. And then when I graduated, I came back to Philly and started going hard on all my independent well, shit. That's smart, man. Yeah. Get your degree, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it kind of allows you to shoot shit, too. Yeah, I was like halfway. Like I was halfway yeah. done already. And, like, I'm not going to give it up. I had a scholarship. Like, I didn't want to lose my scholarship. Because if I would have taken uh, any more time off to just do music, I would have lost that. Yeah. So anyway, I had this song, Hey, What's Up, Hello, that was kind of popping off. Like, it was doing well on Spotify. And uh, I ended up making a music video for that at Noto in Philly at yeah. a nightclub there. So I performed there and did a music video. And now that song's popping. Like, it's got over a million now. So it's doing pretty well on Spotify. Hell yeah, yes, bro. Sir. Yes, sir. Keep working, bro. Elevation. Hell yeah. Wait, so we had a little discrepancy earlier. What's up? What's up? Oh, you... We had a little discrepancy yeah. earlier, and I, I just well, need to know your take because I feel some kind of way about this shit. But I was saying I must be yeah. I must be the only one. But what's that? All right, I was so. saying I was saying Drake and Tupac, pretty similar. All right, so let, let's see how we got there. Not so, ready? Both I was playing, actors, both stars as actors, were like performers in the industry. You know what I'm saying? And then became and then started making some dope ass tracks. I fuck with Pac. I fuck with Biggie more. I think Biggie's better than Pac. That's where we, that's where we had the beef at. And I think you, being just from the East Coast, Ron, it's kind of fucked up for you to even try. No, it's you know not that. Saying? It's oh, not that. What? It's not that. My only thing is that. All right, what? My only thing is this. What? All right. No, I, I, I'm what? not even gonna argue about Pac and Big. That's right. a whole another argument. But I will argue Pac and Drake. All right. Why the fuck is Drake and Pac in the same <laughs> conversation? <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I yeah. don't know, man. Like, I don't know. This is I don't awesome. know if there was ghostwriters back know, then, man. too, bro. I don't know if there was ghostwriters back then, too. I don't know, man. I don't know about it. Because, like, here's the thing. <laughs> I got a lot of respect for both of them, obviously. Obviously. Like, but I got they just got, like, a totally different message. Like, yeah. come on. Like, that's the that's the thing that I I say. guess. Like, I mean, to me, like, is, Drake don't be talking on, like, on political shit at all. Pac yeah. was a political, you know what I'm saying? He Pac was fighting was like for a, a community and shit. Yeah, Pac had a force behind him. He had, yeah. he had like, people rocking with him on some, like, I'm But you going to say bar from bar that he's better than Biggie? That's crazy. Well, no, I'm not going to say better you gonna than say, Biggie. All right, well, then all the writers that wrote for fucking Drake. I just Drake, think it's different you know what I'm <laughs> The argument was, like, So the it's, it's pretty much, like... I mean, what's, I don't right, like the right, right. So what's is better? Is that tripping to say? I'm probably right, so say, I'm going to get killed. So better, so better <laughs> I'm going to get than killed like, if I even start saying it. Right, you got to define better. You yeah, definitely right, so got to define like, better. All right, who made more hits? All right, so, but That's this is what I'm saying. Drake. Are we talking about bars or are we talking about... Drake made more hits. Are we talking about... 100%. Oh, yeah, Drake is probably... Died but, at but to be fair, that's Drake and 10 other people. So it's like 10 people. Exactly. That That's my only plight. Pac is like... From the muscle. Drake got a lot of people behind him pulling strings. So it's like, I don't really know how they... It's a lot. Of, it's a. It's a. It's a lot of. Right. That's like that's that like that apples. Shit. That's like apples to oranges, to be honest. But I mean, but I a, do see the, I do see what you're saying. A do you see what bit. I'm saying? I mean, yo, Drake's got Drake's got more hits than the Beatles. I mean, come yeah. on, that's because sure. the yeah, Beatles is, don't slap. The yeah. Beatles don't slap. You know, like. Drake also like Drake's got more hits than Tupac. I mean, it's kind of it's, it's unfair though because like Tupac's life got cut short. That's, that's, obviously, yeah. he yeah. it's a completely different game. I mean, Tupac yeah. set the stage for Drake. That's that's a fact. Like that's undeniable 100%. fact. But if we so. if we just talk in that line, then you got to respect everybody before somebody. You know what I'm saying? But, I'm just talking. I mean, if you look at the the grand scheme of a career, you know what I'm saying? But, I don't know, man. But like, but but to argue Pac and Biggie, it's two different styles. So Biggie was more a bar heavy. Yeah. Pac is more like a. That's how the West Coast is. Period. The West Vibers. Coast is more exactly vibey type shit. Now I can't say that one is better than the other because it's like it's like two bar for lanes. bar. That's what I'm saying. Like if they were spitting at each other, that's what I always think if about. Like, if you had, if you get rappers right, that like rap you throw on a, yeah you throw on a beat and you start spitting bars and you start coming at each Biggie other. That's, was probably, maybe that's just yeah, a Philly and everybody. Who do you think is the best of all time though? 
Bar. See, that's bar a, I like that question because then, then I think we could get a lot closer to like fighting bar between wise. Tupac and, and Drake. Is, I don't know, bro. Like, if you're talking about who's the GOAT, like, then it's like, all right, now you could talk about Tupac versus Drake as the GOAT, just like the GOAT. I see that. Yeah. Because yeah. then it's like, you're not, you're not, I mean, yo, Tupac's got the. The culture behind him in a different way than Drake. That's the thing. Yeah, that's my different two different way. sides. Different sides. Two different yeah. sides. Yeah. That's true, man. Uh, but bar heavy. Like if they were so spinning the at best? each other, who's the best? Yo, I ain't go fraud. I think I think AR got that joint. AR think AR is the best. I think one? bar head. Like if he if he was in front of somebody and they were spitting bars, I feel like everybody would just start getting like kind of scared of bull, and he'd be spitting bars. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I got a six speed. Uh, yeah. Bentley. And everybody in the room scared too. Everybody in the room, like, whoa, all of his bro. homies are scared. They're like, they they don't want him to pop shit off because he will. No, no, I will. Argue AR's that AR is probably one of the most like intimidating as rappers. I would say that. I be I be shook a little bit. I, well, yeah, I got to not, not, I'm, I'm intimidating. Intimidating is in like saying some like, of the we most was crazy battling shit. And shit. We was rap a, battling shit. AR be saying shit. You be like, how the fuck you thinking that? Like you must have, <laughs> you must have really did that crazy ass yeah. shit. Like, but see, the thing is, but that's also a different style too. So we're just thinking about it more in a sense of like bar for bar, right? But a lot of people don't even give a fuck about that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nowadays you just got. I mean, it's it's, it's about the beat. The beat's hot, and it's about a flow, and it's about just pretty much just having. Kind of this is this is what I think is like people think that because you got social media all the time like you got to fucking pertain to the rest of the world right but they I don't know man like there's so many people out there there's so much shit right but if yeah. you pertain to a, a a city a spot you know what I'm saying like they will always show you love and you'll continually get love in that city like at, at least with Philly like I feel like people yeah. do get Facts. continual love even if they start beefing with each other and start trying to kill each other and shit like you know what I'm saying it's like they pertain to a city and that's why they stay relevant and that's paying their bills. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the thing is, like, these days especially, you really need to be making a great song. Like, you can't get away with just having, like, great bars now. I mean, you can get somewhere with that. Like, you can be, you can have great bars, and that could take you so far. But, you know, I think that these days, like, in this time, the market is very, like, saturated with people who have just, like, dope bars. Like, you know, like, like, I I just feel like, to me, like, lots of people from New York, like, you know, you got that New York flow. Like, Mm -hmm. lots of people got that flow. But it's like... Can you actually make like a great song and incorporate your flow in such a way that's gonna make like a unique song that right. really like appeals yeah, the cuts to cuts through, it's, like, catchy, cuts it's, like, through catchy. You know right. what I think it is? Yeah, I, I feel like since we just came from that bar heavy era, that's what yeah. we were kind of into. You can't really all right so say it like this. Since I know we're not gonna be as good as that, we are gonna come up with something new, and that's what this shit Facts. is. That's what this new. Well, Lil Uzi's one of the biggest fucking artists in the world. That's right that's now. my prime example. And he, I think he invented that whole era of like emo rap kind of shit. Like, before him, like, there wasn't really that many people doing that shit. Was it? Let me think. I got to think I about mean, that. he definitely he made his own wave. He, I mean, he, he also, Cuddy, you Kid Cuddy, Cuddy, maybe Kid like Cuddy, because Kid yeah. Cuddy started doing the fucking no, emo-ish No, I'm talking shit. about, like, I'm talking about, like, even, like, the sound in general. Like, they, I, feel like, I don't know, man. I, don't, I feel I like know. the youth know that ain't no way, like, you can't compete. You ain't going to be another Nas. Ain't going to be another J. Ain't going to be another, none of them niggas. Yeah. So, all right, since we know that, let's just create something new. Let's just go with yeah. this. You know, to me, like, Kid Cudi started kind of like what I was saying, like, the wave of, like, really good music. Like, Kid Cudi started that wave of, like, all right, you're going to rap, but you're also going to have, like, really good, catchy Rhythm. music that's going to have a wide, massive appeal. And then I think Lil Uzi Vert came in with, like, you know, he's got that, like, shot, 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 like, flow. But also, um, what, what really separates him is, like, the digital thing. Like, he came in through the internet. Like, he yeah. was, like, one of those early internet, internet rappers. Kid Cudi was like in my opinion yeah, you still had a label I, yeah like in, in my opinion with kid cuddy like i wasn't it wasn't so like soundcloud internet like it was still coming out through like the more traditional like means you know label yeah. like you said but that was saying. probably the last of that yeah Whereas before that you really weren't making money off the internet you're actually right, losing me, money right. if you have your shit on the internet most artists before remember people would be like get my shit off the internet i don't want it like i want to sell you know what I'm saying? I want to sell like through iTunes and all the other things, and then yeah. you never like those people would never. And then you got, got, got Soldier Boy who like figured yeah, I was out, about to figure out, out how to do that. All right, head. so what about this argument? Let's let's talk about this real quick. Who huh. had more of a better or not better? Who had more of an impact on the game, Soldier Boy or Chief Keith? Ooh, that's Chief, bro. Tough, Chief. Yo. Chief does every like everything. That, I feel like everything. I can't hold my liquor right now, but these bitches can't handle me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Yo, that so shit. Yo, I, 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 was say, in, I don't I, know, man. You got, we got seniors. Apples and oranges. These seniors in high school when that shit was popping, or like junior in high oh, school. Yeah, yeah, that was right on time. Yo, yeah, yeah. Yo, that <laughs> was, dude. I would just always play that. Yo, that Chief Keef was so fire. When I'm finally, telling you. Yo, my my album Crypto Rich. The title is inspired by, by Chief, by Chief Keef. Finally oh, rich. Finally Chief had rich. a. Yeah. Chief came in. No, all right, number one. All right, all right. So be, you, but you think Soldier Boy is that what you're saying? That's what no, you're no, no. My only. This is my argument, right? It's not my argument, but I'm about to tell you what it is. Soldier Boy came out and was the first rapper to go independently and like form and shape kind of what everybody's doing today, right now. Yeah, I say Chief, because I think right now, what's who's more influential right now is Chief Keef, because I feel like all this music stemmed from Chief Keef. Chief Keef definitely did start a lot. He was yeah. one of the first people that came out with the mumble shit. You the even mumble know shit, what yeah. Saying, but I understood it. I and the gun shit, saying. the Chicago Chief shit, and Keith everybody's music video. Chief. Remember everybody's music video? This was everybody's music video before, right? It was bitches, and you know what I'm saying? You at the club, you dress nice, whatever. And, and then Chief Keith dropped the drum with a yeah, a bunch about, of motherfuckers bang, just bang. with guns. <laughs> just bang. I around, kill her. And now, every single video, every single video you see is the same shit. Young Chop. Just everyone just... Young Chop. Young Chop. I'll kill you. Young Chop. i him up. Does yeah. Young Chop get more? Does Young All right, no, no, Young Chop? Like young Chop didn't get enough love but Chief for the mix, the mixing, the saying. producing on that, that oh. shit was so fire. Yo, he was the that, brains behind that it. That inspired me to like really get into pre- like at that time it was before I was making a lot of music. But like when I went, ended up like mixing and doing my own shit. Like that's a big reason why I learned. Is like uh, just hearing that album, the production quality is just hell like, yeah. And and you know like that was the first time that I realized like this was like Young Chop doing that. Like it wasn't like some like. Unattainable like label place like I this knew is, this is like Young Chop and Chief Keep a so nigga in the hood yeah. in his crib like mixing shit up hard for the whole hood yeah Facts. and not even that Chief put Chief got a lot of niggas bread like everybody down there in the area think oh, about it yeah. think how much he don't live there no more he don't live in Ch- he don't live in Chicago no yo, more th- think about that time yo oh, everybody yeah. from here really thought they was from Chicago they wanted to be from Chicago <laughs> so bad like I did I ain't gonna lie <laughs> I really right. did I was about banging I had all all that shit yo so that's a hell of a Oh, yeah. I don't know. You might be right. Chief might have had a, but then you, I don't yeah, know. So I think it's hard. Like Chief came out with more hits. Social Boy didn't really. I mean, yeah, he came so, out with a yeah. decent amount of hits, but it wasn't know. that like that many. Like you can name a bunch of Chief Keef songs. Like the the problem is also that Soldier Boy was a bit earlier, so he well, kind of yeah, he kind of the way he was able to distribute wasn't as as effective. Like Chief Keef was able to like be on, uh, like Spotify, all these platforms. Like when uh, Crank That came yeah. out and all this shit, it was just like. Maybe YouTube. I don't know. It was yeah, like, yeah, was YouTube it was. even out or was yeah, it on no, it MySpace? No, it was YouTube. It was Actually, like a start on MySpace. I think it came out on so MySpace. Th- think first. about it. Imagine, it imagine going viral on MySpace. You get like whatever a million Little followers and it's just gone. It's like Vine. So yeah, like, so like true. in that way, you could say like, all right, Soldier Boy kind of got screwed, and that's what he was saying like all last year, or whatever. Uh, you know, on all the platforms and whatever he was talking about that. I feel him, man. When you, people gotta put respect on Soldier Name, he shaped a lot of <laughs> shaped a lot I'll of niggas' career. Right, right, tell him, bro. Like, like that's no, no, real it's cool. It's cool. Like Soulja I feel Boy, you. Really, I'm not. I'm not disrespecting him. I'm just saying. I feel like it's just different, man. I feel like it's just different. It is. Facts. It is different. It's 100 percent different. It, it, it's, it's talking it's apples to oranges. Right? It is. It's 100 percent is. Yeah. So you're involved in cryptocurrency, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what my album Crypto Rich is about. I mean, it's a big big part of my story yeah. is uh, you know, I took the money that I made with Jordan Belfort and I ended up putting that in a Bitcoin and Ethereum and that was like back in 2016. And if you don't mind me asking, did that yeah. work out for you? Oh, yeah, that worked out for me well, but um really well you know like it not only did it work out for me well in terms of like yeah i made some money off the investment that was dope but also it really i found an interest in it and it's now something i do like full time so in addition to what i'm doing with music cryptocurrency uh investing as well as uh just helping to build out that industry is a big part of what i do so for the people that don't know what exactly is a cryptocurrency because some people hear that shit it's just electric money it's a scam no but it's electric money money, right yeah Yeah. it's, it's it's just a form of money that exists on the internet so uh, you know, you've got the dollar, which is exists in the U.S. By, because of the U.S. government. But soon it won't be anything. Though. Yeah, they're not so, even changed. Like most people don't even care. So here's the thing: you've got like you know, you can think of like Venmo or PayPal. That's an easy way to send money over the internet. But you're just sending uh, the regular U.S. dollar, right? Mm-hmm. And so the difference is that cryptocurrency just exists on the internet only. So it's yeah. it's basically money that's created uh, by computers. So 
with that being but said, is it worth you... more than an American dollar? Like one. Yes. Yeah. Is. One one Bitcoin is worth like worth ten thousand American dollars right yeah. now. But you can yeah. buy yeah. you can buy Bitcoin in any amount. Is that true? So the Bitcoin's kind of like it's kind of like a true. stock. Like like okay. So That's you, what I'm saying. I'm going have a stock, thousand. So I want to get. Yeah. I, I I don't know too much about it though. I'm yeah. kind of scared well, of it. Wait, so with stocks, you got to buy one to one. You have to buy one stock. If you want to buy a stock of Tesla, you have to buy it at whatever it is, correct? Thousand dollars, five hundred dollars. He's whatever. about to give us yeah. a stock. So <laughs> Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you you can buy in any amount. You can have uh, ten cents in Bitcoin, and or you could have a hundred dollars in Bitcoin. It would just be point zero 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 amount of Bitcoin, right? So if you want to have a thousand dollars of Bitcoin, that's going to be point one Bitcoin because Bitcoin is ten thousand dollars right now. So you can put okay. any you can put any amount in. So with that being said, what so who, you own like a who takes cryptocurrency? A where can you where can you spend this cryptocurrency? Yeah, right now I wouldn't I wouldn't look at it like that. There's not a lot of places you're gonna spend it. Like right now, it's more of an investment vehicle, and I would say and I would say it's like a stock in that you're gonna you, so more so it's gonna pay off see the, the money future. build. Yeah. So so it's similar to investing in gold. Why do people buy gold? Because it's it's a store of value. It's something that everybody genuinely sees as valuable because you know it, it has use cases. So cryptocurrency also has use cases in finance, right? That 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 are that are unique to it. So there's a lot of different things that it can do. Like so, Bitcoin, you can send and receive money across borders at a very low fee. So right now, if you want to send money to someone in, uh, you know. Any anywhere in the world, you're gonna have to pay all these bank fees and everything like that. Bitcoin yeah. is the only way that I could send money to someone in Mexico, and they could uh, get it instantly. So that's like a that's like a, a international currency, right? There. So you could like yeah, you could so buy right. shit on like the dark web with that, John. Yeah, you can buy shit on the dark web. You can buy anything. That's right. That's, Fuck yeah. That's where I found that's Bitcoin. It. Yeah, that's what I, I, said. I originally found Bitcoin on Silk Road in the dark web and everything, and that was oh, back shit. in like 2012. I yeah, never so, went yeah. on. I never. I never yeah, even I seen never it. What does it look like? Does it look like an actual like? Website? No, it's probably just a list of some fucked up ass shit. Yeah, it's just like a little like forum, you know. Oh, Every all that dark it's like web. Reddit. It's like no, Reddit. Like, like, you know, it's like it's the before like, Reddit. Yeah, it's like much. Reddit. That's right. Yeah. It's just like is plain. It? Oh, pretty much, but it's just like a dark. I mean, you could get like guns and it's shit. It's like Reddit with like, crack. You could be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you need guns or meth or fucking angel yeah, dust. Yeah, like Reddit with PCP and shit. Hitman and yeah, shit. Yeah. So you can I mean, find yeah, anything. lots yeah. of fucked up shit. But here's the thing: you can bet. My bad. You you could bet on the web how many suicides there are a year. Yeah, so no. can, I'm sure you can. That or in a day. You can I say mean, like there's three suicides in a day in a city, and guess what you could do? You could just kind of. I probably. Yeah, I don't you know, know who's gonna take the other <laughs> side, but <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this. I'll cut it. That's not a lie. But I'm just saying you could just go. murk somebody, right? Couldn't you? You could be like, oh, they three suicides. Give me all money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just kill somebody and hang them, and they'd be like, man, their life was tough or something. I don't know, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, I'll probably get yeah. That. <laughs> I'm sorry. You could do that. <laughs> you could do you know, that. You could get a bet on sports too. <laughs> saying, can you can you buy like a car with cryptocurrency? You probably can't, right? Yeah, you can. Like, so there's plenty of stuff you can buy. I think like you know, not to downplay the the possibility of buying stuff. So if you want to buy a car with cryptocurrency, I'm sure there's car dealerships that will take Bitcoin stuff like that. Oh, shit. Um, okay. But you know, ultimately. It's it's used for transferring value. It's used uh, for you know essentially trading on the internet. So so there's a lot of different use cases. I mean, a big thing that's coming out of it uh, is with Ethereum and something called smart contracts, which is basically where you can program the money. So it's like money where you can set terms. So let's say I want to send you some money. I can say I'm you're only gonna get the money if X Y Z happens. So it's like programmable money. You can build programs. Wow. Into the money. So like, but is yeah. it only based off numbers? So it's so what like, if, what if so I it's want, like, if you right, said right. this company, like you invest in it, like, or not even invest, but like you buy some, it's kind of like you get this back. I got you. I got you. Is it only right, based off say, numbers or is it theory? Let's like, say, could you right. be like, you got to fucking clean my house six times. Yeah. And then like on the computer, like they'll make sure that. Yeah, so like some times, that's you know that's saying? pretty much right. Like it's it's a simplified version. So like you know we, we can think of like you know let's say I I wanna I wanna sell you weed right and you wanna right now I'm gonna sell you weed and you're gonna send me a Venmo right. <laughs> If you send me a Venmo, it's going to go through right away. Right. But what if we could program the transaction, you might want to say, all right, I'm going to send you the Venmo, but it's only going to go through once I have my weed. Right. That's great. But so, so that, that's so the kind of thing it we off, create. Like you, I'm you about to say to yeah. agree to it, right? It's like right. a written Something contract like that. Something like and you that. send it to them. And it's like once you agree to it, that's right? right? then it kind of. That's right. And, and so this that's already cool. this already exists in the real world. It's called escrow. 
and it's something that's gonna fuck up a lot of shit. So like when you buy a house, for example, right? Mm -hmm. When you go buy a house, you uh you you gotta send money to a bank which which holds it in escrow. Because Mm -hmm. the problem is there's there's what's called counterparty risk, which is like you don't wanna send money someone for a house and then have an issue with the title or whatever, not be able to get the property. So a bank holds it for you. So the idea here is using the technology and the internet, you can actually do it without the bank in the middle. So a big part of what cryptos uh-huh. is doing is helping to remove some of these administrative processes, these big banks that are taking all this money uh-huh. for just doing interest. administrative yeah. stuff. So yeah. that's like that, the that's interest some, of because yeah. what it is is like most banks take your money by just handling it. Like right. you know what I'm saying? If you yeah, were able be, to handle your own money, you wouldn't need a bank. Right, and that's what this is all about. That's yeah. that's what it's about. Cross border payments, handling your own money. You know, you hold Bitcoin in your Bitcoin wallet. Nobody can access it except you. If you hold stocks in your trading account, like it, you're technically not in possession of it. So it's like holding cash versus well, holding with, like, your money in the bank. Same with electric money. It was tripping me out. Like seeing all the shit with the coins yeah. and stuff, it is tripping me out where it's like, do, is money even valuable anymore? Or is it this online money? Like I, I everything in my bank, this. like, yo, if, my, ain't that crazy? If, yeah, if, right, right. Yo, if the internet went out, I got like no bread. If so the bank was closed, so, I got like no bread. So that's it. Once, like, once we move, as we move more to cryptocurrencies advancing, it's as easy as having Bitcoin on your phone and then you pay like that. You don't need your credit card anymore. You don't have to pay a credit card company, right? Because because you can do electronic payments without. It's like gold. It's like companies. having your. It's yeah. like a, selling a little piece of gold. And they're like, oh shit. So I'll, I'll tell you this. I just dropped a song. It's called Flash Drive. It goes, <laughs> Flash Drive. Like Couple million on a stick. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Don't get caught no encryption because I got crypto rich. Wow. Yeah. I read the white paper. Yeah, yeah, that, that's just hot. So, but no, that's literally about like it literally goes, Slug. I could send it across the border. You don't need to take a trip. <laughs> you actually spitting yeah. You actually giving off some gems in this shit Oh yeah 100% Yo check out Flash Drive That, that shit's hot That's, all, that's that all about crypto Like you know That's the thing You know, With crypto You can have a flash drive With a million dollars on it I can have a flash drive That you could literally Plug into your laptop right now And then yeah. access a million dollars By going on one of these And just going anywhere And selling it so there's tons of places you can sell Bitcoin. Like Coinbase is one, for example. It's a huge regulated company. They do billions of dollars per year in trading. So that mm-hmm. means I could go, I could sell a, a million dollars in Bitcoin right now and have a million dollars in cash. There's a lot of trading that goes on, a lot. So so, yeah. so remember how you said it's like a stock? Yeah. So would that be to say, like, say if I put money into a Nike stock? Yeah. Or, uh, for example, say I put can money it- into an Apple stock and Apple comes out with a new phone or whatever and the stock shoots all the way up. Is it how does it work with Bitcoin? So the way that Bitcoin goes up because if I put my money in Bitcoin, does it work? Can it like, drop? Well, no. Well, like, does it grow if people invest in Bitcoin? Is that how? That's how that, it works. That's right. So okay, the way right. that Bitcoin is going to grow is only when people invest in it. There's a there's a limited a set amount of Bitcoins. So the more people that are using it, the more it grows. So it essentially grows the more people that are using it for payments, for holding money, et cetera. That's but it doesn't money. have the same thing which Nike has, which is it doesn't have an underlying business which is profiting to create the value of it. So that's hmm. a very, very different type of asset. That's interesting. Okay? Did, yeah. So it, it, really it's, it, it's who very owns different. Bitcoin? It though. can go down. That's what I'm about to way. say. Who, who, owns, owns who the fuck owns Bitcoin? So, so somebody somebody got what if the money, value right? drops? What so if the value drops? Here's, here's the thing. Bitcoin, somebody making money behind all this. That's they what I'm saying. To. Someone's like, besides the, besides the people. This is this yeah. where this where <laughs> yeah, gonna, okay, this is gonna go, get yeah. a little crazy. So yeah. stick with me. <laughs> I got your head. I'm, Bitcoin, I'm deep. <laughs> Bitcoin is a code that someone made. Okay. Yeah. And and basically think of how a credit card works. I swipe my card and then the transaction goes to a big warehouse of of computers that process it because Visa has a warehouse where they process my transaction. Right. right? You feel that? Yeah. So here's how Bitcoin works. Bitcoin allows is a code that allows anybody to use their computer to help process transactions. And so instead of like Visa owning all the computers and processing your transaction, when you pay with Bitcoin, it gets routed to anybody in the world who decides to use their processing power to help it out. So then, so basically, so it's all, like a free. So everybody, visa. everybody yeah. benefits. So everybody, we are the ones making it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in some sense, yeah. So there's a. 
the way it really works is that now there's all these big factories around the world that are processing Bitcoin transactions, right? But they get paid out in Bitcoin from the code that is Bitcoin. And so the whole thing, ah, the whole, they found a finesse. So they, finesse. they, they, they so finesse. where are they at? It's complicated. Where are they at? Where are they at? <laughs> right? Where are they? It's cool though. It's let look, me talk to the motherfucker. Let yo, me be like, hey man, where is this, all this? Yo, it's, where is all this? The guy is named Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who it is. It's an anonymous person. You can look all this up. It's crazy. I mean, this is what got me into crypto. It's yeah. fascinating. It's just like, damn, yeah, how I'm, did they I'm figure this right out? Yeah. I'm high as shit. Yeah, you're high as shit. Yo, and that's what I do. I get high. Yo, I get high as shit, and I'm like. Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> this motherfucker invented Bitcoin, which is worth a hundred billion dollars, and he disappeared. He has two billion dollars of Bitcoin or some shit sitting in an address that only he can access, and he's never. Moved. So wait, is it like all right? So when you talk never about a, it. when you talk what about a code, actual fuck? right? It's crazy. It's when crazy. you talk about a code that's like kind of. It's uncrackable, right? Isn't that what money is? So it's like you can't crack. That's so, the whole point of like a Visa transaction. It's like that protects your money, right? Yeah. So, so it's kind of like it's not – people can't crack into it because it's under Visa. That's why people like trust big companies because they think no one can hack into them. Right. So the reason Bitcoin is as big as it is now is because people have reviewed the code so much and they've determined that – yeah, this really works. Everybody around the world can do these transactions. Nobody's getting scammed. They're getting paid the right amount, you know. And it, 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 but you don't have that layer of security where you have like a Visa. Like, yo, if Visa's warehouse breaks down, they've got a ton of other money to fix it. If something goes wrong with Bitcoin and everybody jumps ship, you know, there's it's over. Like that, so that's true. You know, I'm not gonna get on here and say and and, and you yeah. know, spit Yo, some bullshit. I'm only gonna spit facts. I feel you, brother. I feel you, brother. I, I, I love to put you on the house, I, I believe in it. I believe in. Yeah, I believe yeah, in yeah. all this shit. Like yeah. I really believe in this because yeah. you know the way the world is going. You know, yeah, governments are gonna be around for a long time. They're necessary. But the thing is, why why shouldn't I be able to send a payment through the internet over to Europe, over to South Africa, over to without a fee or some bullshit without without some crazy shit? And then you know, then they can sell it for their local currency that's that's what's so valuable uh, so about. it doesn't decrease in value so it's like the american dollar is different same. somewhere else kind of thing yeah that's right so yeah. they sell it it's for like their everything's local currency yeah or they can use it to buy a car mm. so you want to send money home to you know if yeah. you're an but what if this 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 bull was yeah. just like bro this shit, i'm about to find out well, about got, this nigga yo, what if he was yo, just look, like he, i'm gone i'm coast. about to find out about him he, I'm, well, I'm he already did that that's what he did at the beginning. Well, that's what I'm saying. But, but what if he goes coast? Like no, you're says, right. Like, you're right. Yeah. You're, you're right. He already did that at the beginning. Yeah. So that's the thing that's crazy is he like he remained anonymous and just dipped from the start. He helped set up the whole thing, remained anonymous, and he has an address that only he has access to with like hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of Bitcoin in it. Oh. And everyone's just waiting for him to withdraw He's it. He's got one like day. a country somewhere. Every, everyone, everyone's just this waiting. Like, this is visible to everyone? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Can exactly. See That's right. Everybody can see everything. That's why you're able to audit it. That's why you're able to trust in it. That's why it's worth $100 billion. Because everybody can see all this shit. So you can see Satoshi address, uh, not his name. Nothing's by name. People only know the by everything's code. anonymized. Right, right. Everything's code. So so it's like when so you like send code, like when you C8, send when I send Bitcoin two. it doesn't say like Dill sent a Bitcoin transaction it says my address and only I would know my address unless I told you and if I told you you could tell him and then everyone could tell and then you could figure out what address is mine but you wouldn't but I could go create an address right now and if I didn't tell anybody nobody would ever know because it was generated by a computer code yeah and you just have no name to it. Right. It's like getting right. a fake ID when you were a kid. So you don't have to oh, you get a fake. Up. You got a fake, oh, right? Yeah, were you dude. doing a oh, fake during ID, all this shit? ID God. Yeah, I, yes. Yo, <laughs> I swear yo, to God. That's what Bitcoin's shit. for. I was from Maryland. <laughs> yo, I was, a, I was a dude in Salisbury fucking Maryland, bro. <laughs> yeah. Right when I turned 18 because all my homies were older and they were hitting bars and shit. And I was just like, fuck, like I need a fake. So I hit ID God. I was like, yo, yo they sent it to ID me God's in a dope. fucking teddy bear, bro. It was, they sent me a teddy bear. That's crazy. And it had a thing where it was just like, rip it open. And then look inside, and that was a fucking thing. Yeah, so I mean, that's what like happens when, when, when you create money that is so easily transferable and so, like, global like that, you're obviously going to get bad behavior, like, whether it's, like, drugs or people creating black markets and shit. But guess what? The biggest currency used for black market and drugs is the U.S. dollar by far. It's not even close. Damn. Why do all drug dealers hold all of their money in the U.S. dollar? It's the most stable currency in the world. So if you're in Mexico, you're holding U.S. dollars. I mean, everybody knows the Pablo Escobar shit. Yeah. He's like fucking filling all this shit with dollars. That's how it works. So, <laughs> yeah. so to say Bitcoin is is for scams is 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 stupid. Like like the U.S. dollar is the best currency to 
to fucking wash money with or to hold money in, you know, all that shit. You got anything coming out soon or anything? Yes, sir. You know, I've been dropping hella music. Uh, I actually just dropped a single, like, uh, last Friday, like two Fridays ago, actually. It's called No Sleep. I heard but, uh, you, I appreciate it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I got lots of new music coming out. Uh, my Crypto Rich album dropped last year, and I've been shooting music videos for that. So I got this song, Bad Hair. That music video is kind of popping off. I shot that around Philly and at 30th Street Station. So that one's going for, like, 100K on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a couple other songs too. I just did a video for Murder Me and then I got a video for On Fire. These are all from my album Crypto Rich. This On Fire video is going to be dropping soon. That's dope. That's with Wes Walker again. Yeah, so cool. it's really, it's going to be actually one of our, it's really our first music video since Jordan Belfort that's going to come out. Because we shot this other music video that didn't get released. But this is this is really doing it justice. So yeah. Hell it's going to yeah, be dope. Man. Shout okay, out bro. to y'all, yeah, man. Bro. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Shout out to Wes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, all my stuff is on itslit.org. That's my website. Usually I have my cat, you know. Ding! Ding. <laughs> there we go. Shout but, out uh, to itslit. Yeah, shout out to itslit.org. That's where you can get all my stuff on my Spotify, Apple Music, all that too. Fuck yeah, sir. Bro. Yo, it's your boy Dill, and I'm telling you to fuck with Philly, yes, man. Yes, sir. Let's get it, baby. And until next time, kids, this is Fuck With Philly. Bang!